Hey guys, it's your girl Noskelly. I create content around nurses, aesthetics, skincare, and lifestyle. Today's topic, I'm going to talk about how to determine your skin type and to select the products suited for your skin type. Let's get right into this video. The importance of knowing your skin type is to help you select products suited for your skin type and to prevent you from picking products that could actually worsen your skin type. So here are the four types of skin types that you have. You have oily skin, you have dry skin, you have normal skin, you have combination skin. So I'm going to talk about the subtypes under these four types of skin types. You have the mature skin or the photo A skin, you have sensitive skin, you have acne prone skin. Get your pen and paper and take down some important tips and notes on how to determine your skin type. So with normal skin, you actually notice that your pores are not visible at all. You have small and non-visible pores. So when you look at your face, for normal skin type, you rarely see them complain of acne. Some people complain of acne with normal skin type, maybe due to other predisposing factors to acne. But most times they don't really have acne concerns. And then during the afternoon, right, their skin is healthy, it's shiny, and it's glowing. Most people call that the glass skin. Their pores are not visible. And then you see clean clients go like, oh, I want my pores to be poreless. I don't want to see any pores. And you forget that there is also genetics that play a role in why people's pores are visible on the skin. Or what makes pores visible on the skin. You have genetics that play a role. You have your skin type, your age, environment that can actually contribute to why your pores are visible. Or a build up of sebum. When you have a lot of sebum that is trapped on the pores, then it can actually make your pores visible but for normal skin type you don't really see any pores at all you only see them on the nose and on for the combination chin. skin type you see mostly that they tend to produce sebum on the t-zone areas of your face i am a combination skin type so you can see from this video that i have a lot of shine on my t-zone areas and then their pores can be slightly visible on the butterfly regions of your face with combination skin type you have also the classic the classic combination is the, ty the type of skin type that i have where i tend to produce sebum on my butterfly region on the tip of my nose and on my chin so if you notice that when you apply makeup or even without makeup you tend to have a shiny t-zone area and then your pores are slightly visible on the butterfly regions of your face that you actually need to blot out with powder then you would know that your skin type is a combination skin type with combination skin types sometimes you are prone to having acne as well because you produce sebum on the on the t-zone areas of your face so some people see acne on the chin some see acne those are just within these areas and their pores can become enlarged due to excess sebum production and a build up of dead skin cells you can also see that they tend to develop acne as well on the forehead areas of their face for oily skin you're going to notice that your pores are large and they are visible all over the face. You're going to notice that you tend to produce a lot of sebum or oil during the day or maybe after washing your face. And you also need to touch up with powder every now and then when you actually apply makeup on the face. You are acne prone as well. You tend to have a lot of acne and sometimes when you are not having acne on the face, your skin looks oily. So that is for oily skin. For dry skin, you will notice that your pores are not actually visible. Your skin is dry. Your skin is flaky. You actually need to apply moisture during the day just to hydrate your face. Your skin is actually dull and a bit rough. That is for dry skin. Now, if you want to know exactly which type of skin type, even after watching this video, you are still confused. There is something called a day test. So you are going to go out during the day, look at your skin without applying anything on your face. Look at your skin. If you notice that you, you are oily on the T-zone areas, when you look at me, you're going to see that on my fore, um, forehead, on my nose, on my chin, and around this area, that there is a, a bit more shine on my face. Then you will know that you are 
a combination skin type on the t-zone areas but however if you notice that your pores are visible all over the face and then you tend to produce a lot of shine all over the face that you will need to bloat out with powder all over the face during the day then you will know that you have an oily skin type if however you go out during the day and there is no form of oil on your face your face is dry your face is rough then you understand that you are a dry skin Sometimes this test, however, is not really conclusive because of different factors in the environment. We have the water test. The water test is where you wash your face, don't apply anything on your face and leave your skin for about 10 to 20 minutes and look at your face. If immediately you start to produce a lot of sebum after washing your face, then you know that you are an oily skin. If, however, you, the only part where you notice sebum production is on the T-zone areas, you're actually going to use a paper and bloat like and touch on all those areas and look at the paper. If it's oily, then you know that you're producing sebum on the T-zone areas, then your combination skin type. If, however, when you bloat out oil, it's, it's rough and you're feeling some form of sensitivity, then you know that you're dry and sensitive and then you need moisture to your skin. But if with either of these day tests and water tests doesn't still assure you that you know your skin type, then you can actually see a dermatologist or an aesthetician or an aesthetic nurse that would help you identify your skin type. So let's talk about why knowing your skin type is essential for the type of products that you are going to use. Definitely with oily skin type, you tend to produce a lot of oil and then you are acne prone as well because some people who have oily skin type tend to produce way more sebum than their skin really needs and then it starts to actually clog their pores. Sometimes with different factors, hormones can actually stimulate an oily skin type to produce more sebum and then they start to really break out. So if you're going to look out for lightweight moisturizers that are not comedogenic and they actually help to moisturize the skin as much as you're producing sebum. I'm going to actually make a video on why you should use moisturizers as an acne prone oil skin type and I'm going to leave it on the link up showing right on your screen so for dry skin however they don't have a lot of sebum production and in return they, their skin is not able to actually hold in water so they are having more water loss than water retention so they are lacking um, free fatty acids esters cholesterol so you're looking at products that can help to retain moisture restore the skin barrier characteristics of your dry skin is, is ratchy is leaking and it's also rough they're not helping to lock in more moisture and they are being exposed to factors within the environment and their skin is actually being prone to bacteria so you are going to look out for moisturizers that contain humectants or emollients. So you should actually look out for ceramides when you are buying moisturizers for dry skin because they help to actually attract in moisture to the skin. With dry skin, there is a range. So you have dry skin that is mild to moderate dry skin and then you have the really severe dry skin. And for combination skin, I've talked about it they have more oil production on the T-zone areas of their face and their pores are visible on the butterfly regions of their face. For these type of individuals such as myself, we go for moisturizers that are not entirely for dry skin and not entirely for oil skin. We like to, we are mostly tilted towards normal skin type, type of moisturizers. The benefit of actually knowing your skin type is that it helps you to know the type of products and how you can attempt new products on the skin. Because like I said, with oily skin type, they're not as sensitive as dry skin. So you are going to be careful on how you use products. So regardless of whatever skin type that you have, these are the type of things you should avoid. You should avoid DIY videos. People that come on the internet to tell you to use lemon, baking soda, you should try and avoid those type of ingredients because whatever skin type that you have is going to actually cause you to have irritation compromise the pH level of your skin if you use those DIY products try to avoid the natured alcohol on your face try to also avoid overly exfoliating the face for dry skin is actually worse 
For oily skin, they may not have the more severe side effects than a dry skin individual. Also, overly washing the face, there are certain individuals that you give skincare products to. And these skincare products contain ingredients that actually dry out the skin. And you find that certain people would apply face wash and then they would overly wash their face multiple times within the day with that same drying ingredient. Whatever skin type that you have, you should try to avoid overly washing your face. So these are the things that you're going to avoid regardless of the skin type that Sometimes you have. are very important to understand the type of makeup products applied, to also understand how to use certain products and what products you should actually avoid. We've come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give a like, don't forget to share, don't forget to subscribe. Also, forget to follow me on social media platforms showing right on your screens. It's still your favorite girl, Nas Kelly. I'll see you in one of my videos showing right on your screens. Bye, guys.